Calls are growing for South Africa to take a tough stance on the escalating conflict in Ukraine. The International Relations and Cooperation Department on Friday issued a statement calling for diplomacy to prevail. Some have criticized the statement, saying it's evasive. Let's get some reaction from International Relations Professor Sipamandla Zondi from the University of Johannesburg and Honorary Professor of International Relations at Witts University, John Stremlau. Good afternoon, professors. Uh, thank you to both of you very much for your time. I want to start off uh, with you, Professor Zondi. Um, and ask you whether we're allowing our membership of BRICS to determine our response to the attack by Russia on Ukraine. And, and I'm using those words very specifically because part of the problem at heart is that um, our country's leadership, um, both at a sort of a presidency level and the Department of International Relations level, have used very ambiguous language to describe what is transpiring in the Ukraine at the moment. I must just say that if you look at South Africa's response to conflicts all the way since 1994, uh, consistently um, uh, opposes the use of conflict, use of war, use of arms to resolve whatever political problems are there. And therefore, uh, as usual, almost repeated, almost predictably, always calls uh, for dialogue and always calls um, for negotiation. And that's a, a safest position because other positions look nice uh, temporarily, but over a period of time, what solves all problems is diplomacy and it is dialogue. And, and I think then South Africa um, may be considered weak in, in choosing a peaceful uh, resolution approach, in choosing a diplomatic approach, but in the end, it prevails over those that favor uh, more militaristic, more domination, uh, more harsher stances that usually work only for a short time and later you have to revert to diplomatic means as it happened uh, when, when, when Russia occupied uh, Crimea. It ended up with a mixed agreement and ended up with a political uh, discussion. That's the way it has been. Professor Stremlau, coming to you. Um, and staying with this ambiguous and non-committal language, the, the lack of clear condemnation of the invasion, um, and that pretty much echoes India's response and India's call for diplomacy uh, to be the answer to, this, to, to the situation. How does a lack of condemnation from countries like South Africa and India um, affect or impact international pressure on Russia to cease and desist? I, I think it's difficult to talk about uh, pressure on uh, Vladimir Putin right now because he is um, defying the most fundamental principle of the United Nations Charter, which is the sovereign equality and territorial integrity of member states. It's also the African Union's uh, sort of core principle. And I thought that uh, what South Africa uh, stated as an official statement on the 24th South Africa calls on Russia to immediately withdraw its forces from Ukraine in light of the UN Charter, which enjoins all members to settle their disputes by peaceful means, is certainly appropriate. That is to say, we prefer diplomacy, but I don't see Putin in any case uh, inclined in that direction right now. And I'm afraid that it's going to come down to uh, the Ukrainian people slowing down this invasion and this conquest, this imperial conquest, this is colonialism after all. Let's not kid ourselves. It, it's an assertion by the Russian head, ethnic hegemons that they want to control that independent sovereign state. Professor Zondi, the, the BRICS agreement signed by all BRICS nation also states very similarly that no conflict uh, armed conflict should be used to try and settle uh, political issues or divisions. Uh, so do you think the ANC specifically and South Africa's government need to use their membership of BRICS to take a more stern or stronger approach with uh, Russia or have they effectively done so? I perhaps uh, am failed by English. I don't know what could be stronger than calling for peace in a situation of conflict. Because I can't think of something stronger than peace. Um, and um, that is what Brazil has said. It voted for the resolution at the UN. 
uh, condemning uh, the or expressing concerns about the U the Ukraine uh, military actions. Uh, sorry, the, the Russian military actions. India did the same. Um, 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 uh, even China um, expressed concern about this, and all of them were united in saying, "Let's have a process uh, that would end this conflict uh, that is negotiated uh, like adults have a conversation, end war, cease war." Because it's a general tradition of countries of the global south. Uh, by the way, for the longest time, the, 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 the big Western powers uh, like peace once, and then the next time they go for war. But in the global south, consistently reject all forms uh, of, of conflict as a means uh, to achieve any political end, consistently. Even when the US invaded um, and NATO invaded Libya, the, the BRICS were family against it and wanted peace, wanted a negotiated settlement. Mm. In Iraq, in Afghanistan, consistently does so. I am not quite sure what we mean by stronger. I, um, I'm not quite sure quite a bit stronger than calling for peace. Right. Um, coming to you, Professor Stremler, South Africa's position on removing or assisting South Africans stuck in Ukraine. We've, uh, over the past three days, had um, interviews with numerous uh, students and South African citizens living across the Ukraine. Uh, we've heard some desperate and emotional pleas from people stuck um, amidst the conflict. They can hear the fighting going on around them. They're stuck in shelters. Um, and they are saying, where is the South African government when we need them? Why are other countries able to remove their citizens? India has gone in, withdrawn their citizens, organized flights for them. They're home. They're safe. Our citizens are still stuck in the Ukraine. Explain to us maybe some of the obstacles um, in that um, international relations and diplomatic process. It's, it's simply too late, in my view, and I think the Chinese are advised their uh, nationals uh, they did not make any attempt to evacuate them earlier on and they made their they told their nationals to just hunker down and stay in inside and 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 stay as safe as you possibly can um, you know it's very very hard to know the amount of violence that is being perpetrated by the russian invaders right now uh, so that you 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 hear stories of them blowing up the uh, the fuel tanks that supply a uh, kiev and uh, that will hard, add to the hardship of the people caught inside. But there is a defiance on the part of Zelensky and, and the uh, Ukrainian nationalist uh, uh, civil, civic action groups that seem to be at the moment slowing down the invasion. I think Putin has said he, he hopes that they can have this thing mopped up and re, recolonized in, in he does, that's not a term he uses, in, in two weeks. But uh, the next few days are going to be critical. I just think that on, on the point of, of, of peace, yes, you call for peace, but South Africa is the last standing liberal democracy in the BRICS. And if South Africa is going to be faithful to its principles, it could at least follow along the lines of, of uh, the Kenyan ambassador to the UN, Martin Kimani, uh, across uh, every border in every single African country live our countrymen with whom we share historic, cultural, and linguistic Bonds. I'm just reading from his statement. At Independence, we had chosen to pursue states based on not on ethnic um, uh, homogeneity, but on territorial integrity and sovereign equality as the first step. If you want to aggregate states, then you do it peacefully by negotiation. And I absolutely agreed with, with Professor Zandi on this, that, that that's the preferable route. I just don't see any prospect of that right now. And the question is, are the sanctions going to matter? Are the Russian people going to rise up in any way? Or are they so under Putin's thumb, who's changed the Constitution so he can stay in power until 2036? I, I just don't know yet. It's too early to tell. But that's what we should be looking at, civil disobedience, civil, civil uh, 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 mobilization in, in Ukraine and, and, and the politics back home in, in Russia uh, and the pro course of the battle. Uh, it's too late to, to get South African citizens, I think, out of Kiev. Professor Zondi, coming back to you, um, 
economics play a big role in conflicts like this. Uh, they are usually at some kind of a source level in these conflicts and they definitely affect the economies of countries and in this case an entire continent. Uh, what can we see evolving from this conflict in terms of the economy of the entire Europe in, in the weeks and months to come? Yes, but just briefly on what you, you, you raised earlier on, uh, um, I think we must take also a principal stance and say, as, as Ukraine is dealing with the crisis, they're dealing with the tragic, the killing of people, the death of uh, people, the ordinary people are the people who are going to suffer in the end. But the, the, the practice of blocking black Africans from leaving Ukraine and almost force them to join a war that is not there and selecting them and let the white ones leave into Romania, into Poland, is definitely very bad. You can't be fighting a monster that is called a monster and fighting this and still act in a way that is discriminatory and still expect sympathy from the rest of us. Something must give it. Now, in relation to the economy, we are already facing a huge, huge, huge difficulty. And the, the people who are going to suffer most are the poor across the world, are the poor and the poor regions and countries like ourselves. We are facing the steepest rise in petrol price. Petrol price has risen across a number of countries and highest in the developing countries. It's really, really a crisis because it would lead to a, a, a rise in food prices. It, it could actually precipitate even riots in all parts of that. It destabilizes the whole world. The war does not help. The war creates all manner of problems that we cannot solve. And that is why everything must be done, led by the United Nations, um, perhaps directly by the Secretary General himself, to talk to both sides. I'm just excited, I'm just happy that I heard that the Russians are heading to Belarus and a delegation from Ukraine is heading to Belarus. Perhaps everybody must rally behind us, put pressure um, uh, on, on them to find an immediate solution, an immediate cessation of hostilities and withdrawal of arms, and withdrawal also of installations of arms, and uh, the withdrawal of supply of arms by, from, to all sides, by all sides. It, we need it and we need it now. Our experience with war is horrible, and we don't want to see mm. another war for mere geopolitical uh, power contests and and, and, and so on. Absolutely. Professor Stremler, I want to jump in there quickly and just get an update from you. I had read that uh, uh, Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky had said he's not going to go to Belarus to have the discussions because Belarus has been instrumental in allowing Russian soldiers to enter Ukraine from there. The firing of missiles from Belarus, has, he said that that's not an option. He now refuses to have any discussions with Russia in Belarus. Is that still the case, or has that position changed? No, that's, that's clearly the case. The training exercise, which we exercise, was supposed to end last Sunday, a week ago, they didn't pull out, and they have gone in, and they're threatening... A Oh, Professor Stremler, unfortunately, we have lost our connection with you. Um, and that is unfortunately where we run out of time with this discussion. Thank you very much to you both uh, for your insights. We do appreciate that. It's a discussion that's going to continue dominating news uh, for the next months, at least. Uh, the International Relations Professor Sipa Mandla Zondi from the University of Johannesburg and Honorary Professor of International Relations at Wits University, Professor John Stremlau, joining us for that discussion.